Yo, what's going on guys? Kevin here. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be ranking every single Bloons Tower Defense 6 hero. And let's just get it out of the way. This is my opinion. So if you disagree, that makes sense. We're not the same person, I assume. Unless you're a clone, and in that case, I'm better than you. So, this is based on my opinion and my experiences and how I feel like they perform in general. So it's a weird list, mostly biased opinion, but I'm also going to be looking at how good I think that they actually are. I mean, some of these heroes are a bit niche, and some are, like, really, really good to the point where they're, like, mandatory, etc., etc., etc. So, with that out of the way, let's begin with everyone's favorite guy who never misses, Quincy. And Quincy's very alright, in my opinion. Like, I feel like Quincy underperforms in some cases, but in others, it's fantastic as an early tower just to drop. If you don't feel like going for Sada, or you're on a map where Sada doesn't perform very well, but you know, Quincy can. It's actually quite nice. It's never my first pick, but I understand Quincy's uh, versatility and how good he can be. Also, the DDT damage on Quincy is surprisingly good. It can help you on 95 and, like, 99. Um, Striker Jones, I'm gonna put a not a fan. I think I don't hate Striker by any means, but how often do I use it? Very few. It's one of those heroes that I'm like, yeah, you're good, and there's like a whole strategy behind why you could be one of the greatest heroes of all time, and why people think you might need a nerf, but I never use that strat, so I don't really care. I enjoy Striker for the fun that he can make mortars and bomb towers, but it's just never my pick. It, it, there's just something about him. It's simple. Maybe it's that it doesn't get camo. It's still blocked by black balloons until you get like that one level 6... Maybe it's level 7, Octavia, you good cat? Hold on. But I mean, like, in the right circumstance, this guy is awesome. Plus, you can't deny that, like, the stun is kind of helpful. <sighs> Gwendolyn! I love Gwen. I've always enjoyed Gwen. I haven't used Gwen as much, but I'm using her more now than I did before. Like, it's weird. In the early days of Bloons, it was like Oban and Gwen when I had the free ones, of course. And then it was like all Oban... And then it was like all Gwen, and then I stopped using like both of them, and now I'm using Gwen a lot. And I like Gwen. Her damage is like really good, and the buffs that th she gives to Inferno Ring and um, Dragon's Breath and Bloon Cineration, really cool. I think her buff to Bloon Cine is actually better than what Striker does for the Mortar, which is hilarious in my opinion, but whatever. I think Gwen is overall really good. The Cocktail's fantastic. The Heated Up ability can help the damage output for all of your towers. Giving lead popping before a brief period is pretty good. Not as good as, like, Alchemist, but I'm not going to compare Gwen to Elk. I've got to compare Gwen to other heroes. And as a buffing hero, she's solid. Not, like, the best, but more solid than, say, Striker, which is more niche to only two towers, right? So, I think that's what makes Gwen more of a preference in terms of needing a buffing tower. Also, she can pop uh camos early on with the cocktail which is always kind of nice it's just an overall good hero to have i've always liked gwen i feel like nobody hates gwen <laughs> oban i think oban's nice and i know i just mentioned that striker's niche and oban's a bit more niche but oban can still benefit every magic tower but not as much and his primary use is with druids that being said his buff to druids is unmatched I would probably rather have Oban than Alchemist when it comes to buffing them. That might not be true, but I could see it. That's kind of where I'm coming from. It's stupid. Ignore it. But Oban's Druid buff is so freaking good. It's a whole strategy that's still strong today, and it's what I used to get most of my chimp badges early on. I would just do the Druid Oban spam. Just a lot of fun. And it's a really strong hero, of course. He can pop camo with the brambles, and it can, you know, pop leads early on, similar to Gwendolyn. But, you know, buffs every magic tower, which is really, really cool. Benjamin, I, I mean, is there really a debate here? It's the same reason I think farm is S tier. It just makes money. And you almost always make more money than what it's going to cost to upgrade Benjamin a couple of times. Like, you make a lot with Ben at the end of a game. Now, sure, in a chimps game, it's not that good. So if you're looking at this in chimps, this is the absolute worst. Quite literally redundant. But if you're looking at this as a whole and not just in a vacuum, easily the best. 
when only one game mode makes Benjamin useless, I think you're a good hero overall. It, it's money generation. That alone makes Ben a god-tier hero. Like, what's there to say? Oh, Fusty, I want to really like you, but I've just not used you that much. But I know you're good. So I'm going to give you a top of not a fan. I know Fusty's fantastic and his feet are lovable, but still, I don't find myself using Fusty. Fusty buffs all the towers in its radius with his rallying roar, and then he can crush a Moab down a tier, or I think it completely pops like ZOMGs later on. And that's good, but that ability isn't actually all that useful when you have better Moab damage. Instead, I just care about its rallying roar, which is good. Like, the damage increase is quite nice, and I think they get an extra layer real early on, and being able to pop multiple layers early before, like, crazy amounts of ceramics, fantastic to have. I know Fusty's good, I just need to use Fusty more. And I know, my favorite tower is Tack Zone, and Tack Zone and Fusty is like a match made in heaven, right? But I'm stupid and just don't do it. Uh, Geraldo, I think it's without a doubt one of the most goaded heroes right now. Literally, that shop is still broken good. It makes basically chimps on every map not difficult at all. Sure, you're not going to go play like dungeon, the Dark Dungeon, the new one that they just added with like the spiky traps that you can activate. It's not going to make that a walk in the park by any means, but it makes it easier. G Geraldo is just good. And I know it's pronounced Geraldo, but at this point, I don't care. I like Geraldo. It's funnier. His mustache is also fantastic. Anyways, all my two Mega Pops tends to involve Geraldo, unless I'm specifically, you know, barring him from use. But even then, I use this guy so much. His money generation, again, automatically makes him an S-tier type of hero, is great. Like, you drop the NFT, you sell it, and you get like 200,000 by the time you reach like 95. Holy crap. <laughs> that just means you're not going to lose to the 90s, like at all. Assuming you got it early enough. Then there's the sharpening, there's the pickles, there's the spooky totem, there's glue, which I think saved me more than anything else. There's tax at the exit, which can be nice for a couple of leaking red balloons if you don't want to commit to like a tax shooter or a spike factory. Just everything in this guy's arsenal is fantastic. Not to mention that he can reset abilities, he can get you more um, paragon levels. Like this thing is stupid good. Like it should be your first hero that you buy. I still think Ben is better overall because it's more consistent money generation and you can drop him, forget about him. With Geraldo, you have to constantly look at his shop and he benefits better from a lot of cash generation as Ben doesn't need that to be like overpowered good. But overall, Geraldo's great. I don't think I necessarily would call it overpowered to the point I think it needs a nerf. Because you can over-rely on Geraldo, waste so much money, by the end of the game, you're not able to get, like, a good fifth tier to finish off the game, and you lose. I've had that happen to me because I got um, a little too shop-happy kind of thing, you know? But Geraldo is just super good. You should use him if you uh, have him, and if you don't have him yet, you should definitely buy him. But you know what hero you should buy first? Churchill. This is my bias coming through. I love Churchill. Churchill was the first hero I bought. Because it's just a monkey in a freaking tank. That's hilarious and amazing. Who doesn't love that? I do think Churchill isn't like the best hero overall. Like in most cases, it's too expensive or its damage output's just not as good. It doesn't really buff other towers. And I think heroes are better when they buff things. But I don't care what you have to say. This is a monkey named after Winston Churchill in a goddamn tank. That's awesome. And its damage is still really good. It deals with leads. It deals with camos. Its Moab damage is phenomenal. As an overall damage tower, it's like really good. If you can get it, what I like to do is I'll start with a dart. I'll save up to get a ninja. And then I'll just get like a 201 ninja. And then I can save to get a Churchill. I'll drop Churchill, and from there, Churchill can basically solo, almost. I do need more support, usually an elk buff and a village, but from there, Churchill does crazy good damage. If you put it on a straightaway, the damage is even better. Like, Churchill's just so much fun. I love him. Monkey and Tank is cool. 
Azili, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan because I haven't used it. I've used Azili maybe five times. Maybe a couple more than that, but I just don't find myself ever wanting to use Azili. Even though I bought a skin for Azili. I bought the Galaxy skin because it's so freaking good. But Azili just is one of those heroes I never find myself wanting to use. Not because it's bad, but because I'd rather use literally anything else. I think Azili's use is pretty solid. Like, now that she buffs um, Necromancers more, I think that's fantastic. What else she does, I forget. But I think what really annoys me is that some of her abilities that take lives away just straight up don't work in chimps. They're just pointless. You can't use the Sacrificial Totem to buff like a bunch of towers, which if you could, that would be amazing. I think what they should do in chimps games only, it should take money or something. Because having that buff tower, which gives it like, I think it gives some towers like 50% attack speed, some increased range and uh, layers per pop. And then camo detection, I think. I'm not 100%. Please don't fact check me on that. Or fact check me on that, but don't yell at me in the comments. I'm sensitive. But if you could do that in a chimps game, I think Azili would be like top of the list. Because that's really good. But since some of her abilities are just straight up pointless in a chimps game, why would you use her? And if I don't plan to play a chimps game, it's never going to be the hero I want to use. Because you've got Benjamin. <laughs> so it's just, it's a shame. That Azili just has no real use. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, next up is Adora. And I want to put Adora in Goat, but I know Goated is about to get pretty full. So I'm actually going to put you in Nice. And what I'm going to do is bring you up to Alright, so we have more balancing. But Adora is fantastic. Once you get her up to, like, level 20, and that's hard, don't get me wrong. Getting Adora up to a high level requires a lot of sacrifices and a lot of money, but if you do it, you can rotate her abilities and just clear the final waves of the game with relative ease. It's not too hard to get her up to level 20. I think it's actually rather easy compared to what people like to say. A lot of people say it's just too hard and she's not good enough for that. Shut your mouth. Adora's fantastic. Her damage output is crazy good. She is a little annoying to use early on because until she gets like her two lights or her two... Uh, yeah, I guess they are just light attacks, her bolts, whatever. Her damage output's kind of mediocre, but once you start getting more and then you're elk buffing them and each projectile is doing extra damage, it just gets insane. Adora's damage output is wild. And there's a reason she's one of the best towers to go into the uber late games, like round 200, 300. Adora's just fantastic because she buffs up the super monkeys, which, let's face it, VTSG is still one of the best towers you should be using to get to round 300. But I never really care about going for high rounds, but it's something I will acknowledge. But aside from that, I mean, like, Adora just looks really cool, and her costumes are fantastic. I like Adora. Adora's awesome. I'm going to put you higher than Geraldo, and I'm actually going to drop Geraldo. Statistically speaking, Geraldo's probably better in, like, an average game. But in a long-term game, oh, even a long-term, getting that level 100 almost guaranteed Paragon. No, I still think I'd rather use Adora just because I like Adora more. Letting my bias come through here. I do like Adora enough to put her in go. She's awesome. Just salute the sun. Uh, Brickle. I wanted to immediately say Brickle was my favorite hero because water hero. That's cool, right? Um, and it's similar to Churchill in the sense that it's just a monkey in a freaking uh, boat. But it wasn't enough for me to love it. So <laughs> you go to not a fan. Uh, I think you're alright, actually, because I do love pairing you with subs, and I love submarines. Duh. But I never really use you too much. I sometimes do. Like, when I'm doing um, collection events, and I've got some, like, trophies on freaking what's it called? The, the damn map? I forget what it's called. Oh, my God. But, yeah, on any, like, high water maps, I usually will use Brickle, just because I can spam boats. And, you know, you get, like, all three types of boats. You get the one boat that buffs the other merchantmen. Um, Trade Empire, you buff all your merchantmen up. You've got the boat that's buffing up every water tower in plane. And everything's damage is, like, crazy good. And you don't really have to do much because the boats are paying for everything. And, you know, you're already using the boats for the defense. But I don't know if it's exactly Brickle that makes this strategy good. 
or if it's, you know, the other boats that's buffing itself. It, it's a lot of boat word. To shorten it, I it's not my first hero. <laughs> it is far from my first pick when it comes to a hero. Uh, I'm going to skip you for a sec. Um, the French, we don't respect French to begin with. However, I've used the French enough to decamo to say like, yeah, you're not bad in the sense of decamoing or giving global camo uh, detection. But Geraldo does that with camo potions. You could get villages. You could get um, decamo mortar. There's decamo submarines. There's towers that just do camo damage in general. You don't need a uh, French guy. I, I'm forgetting his name. ETN. Um, but you don't need him in every game. But in some, it's actually not bad by any means. And ETN's damage is pretty freaking good once you get the um, the level 20 permanent you have. That's like really good. I kind of wish you could elk buff this guy. But at the same time, I'm not sure if that would be a good thing. <laughs> But not bad. Overall, it's just... I'm just not a fan of using it in most cases. I should probably put you a little higher. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fine location. And then, finally, we got Sada. Oh, man. I'm so torn on how I feel about Sada. I want to say she's my favorite hero, but I think she's my third behind Benjamin. Just barely oh you know i'm actually gonna put her ahead of benjamin you don't beat out churchill there's no hero that will do that but i think you're just ahead of benjamin and because you can drop this thing so early you could drop it round six right once you start off on your chimps game you can drop a sada and on some maps you can quite literally have sada until round 29 and on some maps you can go even higher than that and you could just save money forever even after the nerf that they gave her a little while back, she's still able to carry you to, like, round 30s, right? She is really, really good. I've done a two mega pops with her with both a super expensive super monkey. I've done the big plane, and I've done glue storm because you guys are degenerate. She's just really good. Her damage is awesome. To be fair, her Moab damage kind of sucks. But if you think of her as a Glaive Lord that you can get on round one, then all you need to worry about is the bigger balloon to get them, them to pop. After that, I mean, she's fantastic. And if you're doing things with glue and ice uh, monkeys and, you know, all that cool stuff that does damage over time, like balloon incineration or, I don't know, whatever else does DOT, she's really good. And like I said, Glue Storm and Sada surprisingly good <laughs> so really cool hero one of my favorites i use her very 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 frequently nowadays more frequently than churchill but i don't like her more than churchill because churchill is awesome so there you guys have it my tier list of every single relevant bloons tower defense six hero if you guys agree with this list let me know in the comments down below or if you guys have a different opinion of course let me know down in the comments i'm definitely open to hear what you guys have to say if you're offended by my way of treating some of these heroes, then I'm sorry. Very little, because this was my opinion, as I previously mentioned. But, thank you guys for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you guys have any suggestions that you would like to see me do in the future, let me know. Now, for those of you that are sticking around this late into the video, I just want you to know that I'm working on a big project that's taking me a lot of time to uh, get finished. So, if content seems slow and streams haven't been a thing for over a month now... I do apologize. I'm going to come back to streams hopefully this weekend. I'm not going to promise it, but I'm hoping so. And I'm hoping that my videos can become a little more consistent as well as other video ideas that I would like to go to uh, do in the future. But I just want you guys to know that there's a really cool project that I'm putting a lot of heart and um, energy into right now. And I'll let you guys know more on that as the weeks go on. I have no set date on when it's going to come out, but it's a huge passion project kind of video and i think you guys will really like it it's not balloons to spoil anything but it's a great video so i love you all thank you for watching hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next video peace